Hey, hey, how are you? Good. How you doing, man? Good, good, good. Can you hear me and see me all right? Is that all good? Yeah, I just I'm unable to access my camera, unfortunately. Oh no, that's perfectly fine. No, all good. But I can definitely I can definitely hear you, yeah. No worries. Awesome. We'll get started then. Cool. It's awesome. Hey, hey, it's Kynan from Silver Tiger Media, and I have the absolute pleasure to be joined by Max Cavalera from Soulfly. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, man. Good to be talking to you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um, very, very exciting to see you on the lineup for uh, Good Things Festival at the end of the year. Um, and from what I understand, you're also throwing in some cheeky uh, headline shows as well. How do you feel to be coming back to play Down Under? Ah, uh, there's no no better way to finish the year, man. Finish strong. <laughs> you know, yeah, oh, this year has been it's been cool. It's like a, a return to live shows. We already toured America a couple of times, uh, South America, uh, Japan, and now uh, you know uh, we have I have one more tour in America in October. But then, uh, yeah, the best way to finish the year is is, is coming to Australia. I absolutely love Australia. Every time I've been there back in the, all the way back in the Sepultura gigs to the first soul fly to killer be kill they australia's never let me down it's always a blast you guys are savage animals in the pit you know <laughs> uh, of course so yep. it's gonna be great i'm i'm already yeah, i'm excited the new record is out they will get to play some stuff for that and uh That's we're gonna have awesome. uh, dino as well with us uh, one of the last things he's doing with us uh, I think next year we're gonna find somebody else to 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 play with us. But people in Australia they have to see Soulfly with Dino. It's a unique, cool thing that happened. It's he's a legend. <laughs> it's, it's so good to, to have him with us on 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 the Soulfly stage, playing and making Soulfly sound that the hybrid Soulfly Fear Factory sound that machine mm. ha, right hand of his. Uh, it fits us perfectly, and Australia gets to see that in, in December. It's going to be great. That's amazing. I was going to ask about that, actually, having uh, Dino on board for the tour. How did, how did that come about? Well, he's the first guy that we reached out after when we knew we were going to start touring before the album was even out. He learned a couple of new songs, and we did the... We actually did two U.S. tours with him, and uh, it was amazing. And we, it, it just connected. We know we we are old friends from back in the day, and um, I love Fear Factory. I, I love Dino. I love Dino as a person and as a musician. The, you know, sometimes it's hard to find. Sometimes the, the guy's a good musician, but he's a, he's a crappy person. But you know, Dino is the the is the whole deal. Is the complete package. He's a great guy and a great player, and it was perfect for Soulfly at where we were at the moment. Um, and it was it, he's a, he's he shreds, man. People don't know, but he, oh. he the stuff he's doing in Soulfly is amazing. Um, and it's it's so cool to to like he, he has all these cool stories. Like after the show, we hang out and. and becomes a bit like campfire in the front of the bus, you know, the stories with Dino, you know, at, at night, he's telling all these crazy metal stories of his life. It's great. You know, we all share uh, tales and stories and, and it's just fun, man. Um, like I said, uh, we had a chance to do, we just did Japan with him it was fantastic. It was the first show actually in Japan after COVID. It was a download festival. It was great. And uh, I that just hit him up. Like, do you want to do Australia too? You know, I was like, let's do it, man. It'll be, it'll be cool. They love you there. You know, they love your factory. And, and uh, hopefully by then also, we can even squeeze the whole fear factory song on the set list. That'll be great. Oh, if I wasn't excited already, I sure as shit am now. That's, that sounds absolutely awesome. Um, the list of collaborations um, you have done throughout your career is just absolutely legendary and everything you've worked on. Uh, COVID would have obviously had a massive impact on that. How was your experience with it? How did that change your process of creating music? Well, yeah, I think COVID was, was a, like a learning uh, 
kind of like a learning experience for all, a lot of us, all of us kind of like really um, don't take for granted what, what we have, you know, the, 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 this music freedom that we have and it can be taken away from us, like COVID showed that. And I think like, I realized when we went back to touring again, there was like a, a different attitude towards the live show. It's a bit more like we show more respect to the live show and, and we really, it's a, it's a sacred thing that we love. It's, it's our church, you know, this is our temple. Um, and we really don't want to lose it again like that. Um, at the same time, I, I think that to me, it was actually kind of cool to spend some time at home as well. Um, I mean, I got a chance to do a lot of work during COVID that I wanted to do. I, I did a whole record with my son, Igor, called Go Ahead and Die. Um, it was an amazing experience just working with him. I love the record. It's very old school, caveman, death metal, like no, no gimmicks. Just what you see is what you get kind of record. Um, I got to do the Killer BQ album and it was, you know, it's been four years since the last SoFi record. And I also during work a little bit on totem during COVID. So in, in all in all, I really use my time mostly recording. Um, during pandemic, that's when I was most active, actually. I was more active during COVID than probably before, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, which is kind of cool. You know, I just took the time. I, 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 I knew what I could do. Uh, you know, we could be in the studio. There was no restrictions to, against that. So we just went hard and I made all these records that I wanted to make. Um, and in fact, I'm actually working on a new Go Ahead and I record right now uh, for next year. And uh, so, yeah, so it's, 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 it was good. It was like a learning uh, experience for all of us. Um, we all did different things. Some people freak out. Some people lost their minds during COVID. But uh, we kind of just kind of learned to adapt with it, you know, and, and try to do the best you can under the, the situation. Of course. I think, yeah, everybody experienced it um, very differently. And I'm happy that for you that it sort of um, almost gave a boost to your uh, creative uh, processes and your recording and stuff like that. And very exciting to hear uh, more about what you're working on at the moment. That's, that's very, very cool. Um, Congratulations on the release of Totem earlier this year. That's very exciting. Absolutely stellar record. Uh, it's um, a dedication to themes surrounding spirituality, mostly, especially with songs such as Superstition and Ancestors leaning more into those themes. Uh, the album cover shows that as well. Where do you draw that inspiration about spirituality and what's the process of turning that into a more musical form. So yeah, I was looking for something um, more more towards connection between heavy sounds, electric sounds, um, the energy of, of those sounds and nature itself, which is to me also very electric. And very metal, actually. I look at nature a little bit different from other people. Um, some people look at nature more like in a hippie way. I don't. I look at it as a, as a powerful thing, as a force. Um, especially when you see some of the stuff that nature can do. We, we, we should be definitely, uh, be definitely uh, in awe of it. You know? And I wanted to make a record that kind of tells people right now in this day and age of me and you are communicating electronically right now you know mm. through the digital age but sometimes put the phone down and go for a walk and enjoy nature around you um that's kind of cool let's not lose that you know that's that's something that's been here like forever and i feel that the more and more we advance with technology more and more people lose that connection and i was 
totem is a bit of a reminder not to lose that. Let's, because I think like nature is all, it's a, it's a, it's a worldwide thing. It's not, it's not something that just only here in America or, or in Brazil. I mean, it's in everywhere. It's in Australia, it's in Siberia. It's everywhere there's, there's powerful, beautiful nature to be inspired by. So totem is a bit of a reminder of that. And I really draw from stuff around me. You know, superstition is about a mountain here in Arizona called Superstition Mountains. That's like the first track I, I made for the record. And um, again, the album cover, I love what the what what the artist did. Sima did a great job, especially on the forest side with the little animals in the dark forest and uh, <clears throat> all the of the imagery of the totem pole. I really think it was an amazing visual. And it's back to heavy metal album covers that you spend time with it, you know? I love that. You get to spend oh. some time with, with the totem album cover and look at the details of the of the totem pole in the forest and the lightning in the in the sky. It's really cool. I love that. I love that that connection between heavy metal and album covers. It's always been strong. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think when you're looking at that album cover, you sort of get a get a sense about uh, what you're getting into uh, upon listening to the album. Could you give me a little bit more? Tell me a little bit more about uh, your view of the album cover and what it sort of means and symbolizes? Well, to me, uh, I didn't do it for that reason. In fact, we were trying to make some of the animals be part of our signs because I'm a, I'm a Leo. So, so my, my, uh, my, my uh, Zodiac symbol is a, is a lion and, um, and, and Mike is a, is a Taurus. So, he, he, you know, it was, it was like, uh, uh, he'll be a bull and, but we kind of scratched that idea once we start talking with the artist and just let him go freestyle in whatever he wants to do with the totem pole. I'm cool. Even there's an animal in the middle. I don't know exactly what that the animal that is. <laughs> it looks a bit like uh, uh, like a warthog, but I'm not sure if it is. It's kind of like it's like his own creation. And uh, I think there's one guy that he he saw the cover. He told me that to him. If, if it symbolizes different eras of my life musically. So there's some of it as like black metal stuff. There's some death, death trash stuff and there's some groove stuff, some new metal stuff. And I think that's, that's the coolest one. And, but I know it was not done with that in mind. So it's like, it's again, it's one of those happy accidents that sometimes happens in music that just kind of like make, I think that the best way to, to do it is actually let anybody have a free interpretation of the record it could be whatever they want it to be man to me is a the totem name is actually means uh means family it means um a symbol of strength connection with your uh with the souls of, of your ancestors that's all what totem represents to me so that's why i picked the name and in fact it was original name was more black metal it was totem obscurum um wow <laughs> but i end up i end up just changing just to totem because there's more soul flight to have one word <laughs> of course yeah, yeah yeah i think it's cool it's uh you know it's it, it, again the, the record is all a lot of it 90 percent of it is about nature especially the, the last track spirit animal it's kind of like a like an epic ending like nine minutes of talking about our spirit animals and how they guide us through life and um, our connection with our um, the people that we love that are no longer with us in, in, in flesh but always with us in spirit um, also is present in this song a lot of the record was inspired by that kind of stuff and there's some stuff like cancer you know for scouring the vials to me it was a like i say like a fuck you letter to cancer i hate cancer it has taken so many great people from us mm -hmm. and it's a 
it's a bastard of a the disease that comes without your permission and it just invades your body and destroys you you know it's it's fucked yeah. up so it's i wanted awful, to write a song awful. about that about that feeling like especially for the people that fights it and overcomes the fight against cancer and uh so it's carrying the vial is born from that but most of the, the record is really more nature inspired that's awesome yeah that's absolutely beautiful yeah especially um as a just a bit of a memoriam for those uh we've lost uh just many great souls um that we've lost over time it can be uh representing them a lot so it, it, it i'm sure it means a lot to to everybody my, myself included um i wanted to talk about the closing track spirit animal a little bit it's uh being a, a almost 10 minute just shred fest and a just a captivating display of just monstrous, amazing vocals. Uh, it's such a large song. Uh, it's a little bit different for Soulfly. Did that track go, uh, grow organically during its production or was there one set goal pretty much from the beginning? So, so that's one of those tracks where uh, I'm totally out of my comfort zone. It's, I don't know what I'm doing. I was like telling Arthur, I think I, I beat more than I can chew, you know, <laughs> I was in, hot, you know, I was in hot water with this one, but I, I kept working on it. Cause I thought something cool is going to happen to this. Like, I don't know what it is, but I will keep working on it. And then I saw this documentary about this, uh, psychologist of music talking about music that puts people in trance and it should be over six minutes. And that really intrigued me into, okay, I, I got to make a song that's longer than six minutes. So that was the goal. Um, and, and I think it's like, go back to some of the old uh, tracks that I did in the past, like Inquisition Symphony, have all these riffs, right? So you just keep piling riffs on top of riffs until you see where you're at and I end up being nine minutes and a half. We could have pushed it a little bit and made it 10 minutes. We should have done that. 10 minutes would have been better, but you know, there's something kind of cool about nine minutes and a half too. <laughs> it, it kept like a just slightly under 10 minutes, but definitely, um, definitely it's kind of like, I tell myself, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going there anyway, and I'm going to do it. It's one of those things that I try to do as a musician sometimes that becomes part of me is unafraid of new territories and, and, and unafraid of trying new things. And easily I could have done the record without it, right? The, the record would have only eight songs, still would have been a massive record. It, it would have been a beast of a record. But I think having Spirit Animal adds to the record. It makes, makes it more interesting. It, has, it shows that we're not just playing old school stuff. And we actually look to the future of possibilities. And I'm very proud to say that, that I don't know nothing. And sometimes I jump into these situations exactly to, to put myself in the, paint myself in the corner and I have to get out of it, get out of there somehow. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not actually not even fun to do it, but um, the result when it's finally done is actually quite, quite cool and quite fun. Uh, and when I hear people talking about the song that they love the song, that's when it's like, to me, it's like all worthwhile, but why, while am I doing this really kind of stressing? Like I told Arthur many times, I don't know what I'm doing here right now. This is fucking absurd. You know, <laughs> I should not be doing this song. What am I doing here? You know, um, but it's in, in the end, just, it works out, man. I think it, it belongs to the record, belongs to the Soulfly, even the Soulfly lifestyle of what this band represents. It's a big part of it is to do stuff like that. So I'm glad we did it. Of course. Yeah. It's the um, absolutely uh, the experience um, and results, as you said, you can get from just throwing yourself into the deep end is, is incredible what can happen. Yeah, it's uh, another a bit song, like a, a bit like a like like a traveler, right? Like a lot of, a lot of time, I think I look at, 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 at as a traveler, like most mostly like be a traveler, and not a tourist. Yeah, and 
first thing I think you say to yourself when you're traveling is that you don't know anything and you you uh, embrace that attitude and you go into a place with a total open mind and you mm. want to learn about the place and let the place overwhelm you and and learn from it you know and that's kind of like same situation with song like spirit animal is that like yeah that's not what i normally do it's not what i i'm com i'm not comfortable with this don't know exactly what i'm doing here but let's do it anyway because it's going to be fun <laughs> you know it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be tortures but it's going to be fun at the same time it, it's a weird mix of, of fear and excitement <laughs> you, that you only get in when you're making soulfly records of course of course it's actually uh amazing you've uh touched on being a traveler because i was literally about to ask uh the song soulfly 12 uh is uh just listening to that i i had this feeling uh this vibe as if i was this lone weary uh warrior that was been wandering through the forest just battling evil uh, creatures and i'm just sitting at a campfire just sort of resting and taking everything in and that's the vibe i really got from that song as it's very it kind of diverts from the rest of the album a little bit is the sense that it's not not as quite as heavy as the rest of the album it's more gothic and mellow what's uh what inspired you to throw that in that little bit of contrast yeah, so all, all these Soulfly tracks, uh, which they started on the first record and be, they became mandatory uh, mm. on every Soulfly record. And every one of them, I try to be as creative as I, it can be and really stretch out the imagination to have them go somewhere I've never really done before. Or, or But they all are coming from uh, a very melodic part of my brain so most of them are very connected to the, the very spiritual and very uh, melodic and uh like this one is uh, very heavily inspired by 80s gothic a lot of sisters of mercy and and uh, old cure and new model army and stuff like that that i listened to uh back in the 80s that I kind of want to bring it back and in, in, put it in a Soulfly record. I'm very curious about that. Uh, in fact, one of the original ideas was not was not going to be an instrumental, and we we're going to ask uh, we're going to ask somebody from Sister of Mercy to sing on it, or 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 somebody from from uh, New Model Army or you know Justin Sullivan to sing on it. But that ended up not happening, and we end up just with the instrumental. But I like to think it's a bit the same plot as uh, Planet Caravan, which works. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, the reason it works because when you have a heavy record that's full of heavy stuff, it's full of energy and angry songs. <laughs> when you have a break in the middle like that, it's kind of cool. It takes you somewhere else. You know, it transports you to a different place, and um, which I think is great. It's it, it, I agree when I, I seen many interviews of Tony Iommi talking about Planet Caravan and it, it's always the same that he wanted to make something melodic in the middle of the record that makes all the heavy stuff heavier and and kind of brings light into the into the a, the, a dark record um, so I feel the same way about uh, this song it has a bit bit of a Planet Caravan vibe to it that I think is really cool I couldn't agree more. And I, I really think it also just adds to the whole uh, meaning of the album. And, what and I love, I love about. your description of that, what it did to you. Uh, I don't know if there was, it was a, a, any mushrooms involved in your uh, trip in the forest. <laughs> but, uh, hopefully there was. Uh, <laughs> oh, not, yeah, not, if, not if this it time. Does but... that, then I did my job. <laughs> of course. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, um, absolutely amazing just like I, I i just got so many feelings while listening to the record and it's um it's it, it's an experience i want to call this record it's an absolute experience and i hope that's, that that's everyone cool. uh, cool. I mean, I hope... a lot of a lot of those tracks uh, were kind of creative i kind of call it uh 
uh, cinematic music type. It's their like movies a yeah. little bit in my head. They play a bit like movies and some of them, it can be a highway in the desert or mm. like, like a, like a lone highway or, um, or, or a forest or a jungle, you know, um, let your imagination take you there. And I think that's great if music can do that. And again, it's different for each person listening to the record, man. You know, some people don't like those songs. It's fine. You know, it's okay. I don't, I don't care really. It doesn't hurt my feelings when they say that they don't like it. And some people love it. Some people just want more of those. Uh, it's different for everybody, but I, I think they belong to the record. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we are about to run out of time, which is so disappointing because I, I could honestly chat to you for hours like this has been an absolute pleasure uh next year marks 25 years since the birth of soulfly can we expect is there any plans uh to celebrate that or can we expect anything we don't have nothing in set in stone yet but it's always good to to know those 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 anniversaries the only bad thing that it reminds you that you're getting old um <laughs> and that's the only drawback from it but apart from that it's um it's it's cool to know we're celebrating 25 years of, of this or you know 30 years of that record and uh we had a lot of those recently um yeah it's a, it's a definitely a special date hopefully we do something with it i don't know right now i have not planned right now my my uh my planning is all the way to australia as far as touring goes um, and then I have to look at what I'm doing next year. I got all the things to work on it, but I'm a workaholic. I'm only happy when I'm working. Um, I hate, uh, I don't hate vacation, but I'd rather stay busy working. Um, I always say I, I rest when I die anyway. So like, I'd rather be, stay busy, stay working. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's not work. It's really what I love to do. So yeah, we hopefully we do, we come up with something next year to celebrate. If not, just the fact that that we that I've been doing this with Soulfly for twenty five years in itself is a miracle. It's incredible. Mm. Oh, that's it's absolutely awesome. And yeah, I totally agree with you too about just keeping on your feet and just taking enjoyment in your work and stuff. Um, well, might wrap that up there. Thank you so so much once again the legendary Max Cavalera for joining me uh, tonight and um, very excited to see you at the end of the year for good things. Thanks, man. Nice talking to you. I'll see you in Australia, brother. Awesome. I'll see you there. Thank you very much. All right, man.